interesting. And then you're going to appreciate your tea even more afterwards. So I'm going to hand over to Joanna, who's going to introduce John and Tamara. Okay. Uh, so thanks for coming back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that uh, whistle-stop tour of uh, CAT. Um, for those of you who may not know me, uh, my name is Joanna Pollard. I'm the Compliance Officer for BAFTS. Um, I've been involved in BAFTS in many different guises over the last 10 years. Um, and it's a great pleasure to uh, share the platform today with um, two really sort of interesting characters in fair trade. Uh, so we've go. got to, to, <laughs> Tamara uh, Cobberson is the uh, Guarantee System Manager for the WFTO. Um, and she's come, as you can imagine, a really quite a long way today. She's come from the Netherlands. Um, and then we've got John Steele, who is the CEO of Cafe Direct, and he's come up from London today. Um, so it's really great to have the two, uh, these two people with us. What we're going to be talking about is... Um, it sounds quite dry, but I think it's really interesting and it's phenomenally important to our movement. It's about verification systems, it's about monitoring systems. Um, so th the first thing I'm going to start, because one of the things that... One of my other hats is the, the chair of the National Campaigner Committee. And one of the things that campaigners keep telling me is that when they go into cafes or uh, places where fair trade could be sold, and they say, oh, no, I buy direct. Now, obviously, a cafe direct is called cafe direct for a reason. <laughs> um, so I'm going to ask John to talk a little bit about the difference between fair trade and direct trade. Uh, obviously, with Cafe Direct, you've chosen to go down the route of being fair trade certified, um, as well as buying direct. What do you think of the uh, the issues in that that field? Oh, th thank you for asking me the first question. Um, <laughs> really appreciate the stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's um, it's quite an annoying set of circumstances, really, because a lot of companies are making out they're doing the right thing, aren't they? And yet everybody's doing different degrees of, of right thing. Um, and certainly, you know, we, we chose to adopt fair trade in 94 and stick with it 100% since. But when the business was born, it was a collaboration between, you know, farmers and Oxfam and Tradecraft and Eagle Exchange and, and Twin, and it was very much a direct co collaboration. And so I think, um, I think to us, that direct collaboration means you're all part of the same family. Um, you've, got, you've got the same purpose as well. Um, but then by adopting fair trade, it's interesting. Some of the new direct people will go, well, we deal direct because they get their coffee from a farm through the broker in a way that means that they feel that they're direct or they do go to a farm directly. But I guess really it matters how you run your business and with what purpose. And if you look at who owns many of these businesses, they're you know, commercially owned businesses that are trying to make money for the shareholders, not trying to change farmers' lives or uh, you know, mitigate to, against climate change. So the whole kind of fogginess of it is quite irritating to people who've been around too long and stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, I think um, so at a, at a quite base level, because you're going to come on beyond certification, but at a base level, at least with certification, you are committing to a certain price, a certain amount of um, premium and so on and so forth, whilst if you just go, oh, yeah, my coffee's direct, um, that's very, very um, hard to understand what it really means. So I d does that get anywhere near to starting an answer? Yes, definitely. And I think, I think one of the things that we have is you can say that you're buying direct, but it's almost about where does the money go? Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and that's what it boils down to, isn't it? Exactly. And I think, in a way, it's, it's the ownership of the organisation, isn't it? I mean, if you start your own coffee company and you, you're the profits are redistributed to you and your family or something like that. Um, that's different to if your Articles of Association say, we'll redistribute that money to farmers and, and so on and so forth. Um, so, yeah, it's a bit naughty, isn't it, really? I mean, that word direct, it's a bit like when you, you see products that say they're natural and you have to really understand what goes into them to understand how they've got away with that word. Mm, so. Yeah, it's almost something that um, Aileen mentioned earlier, the Green Claims Code. It's almost something that should come under the, the Green Claims Code as something that actually, what does direct trade mean? So, so maybe that's something that we can uh, start pushing for. Uh, so tomorrow I'm going to turn to you. Um, the, obviously, um, Cafe Direct is Fair Trade Certified, capital F, one word. The WFTO is more about fair trade, two words. 
um, and WFTO members do deal direct with, with producers in the global south. What does the guarantee system do um, that's different from the certification for Fairtrade One Word? Yeah. Um, I was just going to get into that. It's another semantics issue, but uh, yeah, we very strongly focus that we, we work in fair trade. Um, and that means we don't have that certification system that most people know. Um, but we actually, um, about 10 years ago, our members indicated that they really want to be able to show what they do is fair trade and want to be able to show that that's recognized as well. So then they started developing the guarantee system that we have. And that guarantee system is more focused on the organization itself. So we really look at, as you said, the mission, uh, what, what amount of money is put back into the organization, how are profits used, really, really the core of fair trade. So it all starts with that. If someone doesn't do that, if the organization doesn't do that, they cannot be a member of WFTO and they cannot become guaranteed. So that's a very important difference. It cannot just be one product line that is verified as, as fair trade, uh, one word. So I think that's the main difference. <coughs> But our members started to feel that there were two components that they were missing. One, um, we of course have a lot of members that buy from each other, multiple members buying from one of our suppliers, um, and all these members individually asking for the same verifications from them. So they needed the system to make sure that they have the efficiency, that they fill out one form, they have one uh, peer visit, one audit, and that works for anyone involved. So we developed a guarantee system where all the buyers were happy to know the standards, to, to know what's included, so they didn't have their own in, um, individual verification again. From the supplier side, it was very important to have that clarity, but also that input on what is actually expected of the buyers, because of course this self, same form needs to be filled out by the WFCO buyer members as well. So it's really about that relationship, and not just about checking what a supplier is doing, checking to fix the tick boxes uh, that suppliers should only focus on. It's really doing it together. But in addition to that, <coughs> of course, our um, uh, supplying members sell to our members, but we also want to broaden the range of their products. So they want to be able to go outside, to go to commercial buyers, to actually reach out and, and, and find new customers. So in that light, they also needed a product label. Um, and um, they didn't really fit the other certification systems because for one, they could never afford having audits every year, but also that system where the supply chain is followed rather than the mission of the organization doesn't fit the majority of our members because they often have a combination of different ingredients or components in their product. Um, it, it defies the goal to actually try to figure out that whole supply chain um, rather than focusing on the mission. So that's why our membership felt an extra label was needed. Um, and that's why our focus is more on doing it together, continuing to develop together, and, and seeing what our members and their buyers need from the system. Yes, certainly. <laughs> so it seems like the, uh, the guarantee system um, is, is less a certification than a verification, um, which make, brings me on to uh, the importance of external monitoring. So, John, this is obviously really important for, for fair trade. Um, and that's one of the sort of critical things. How many countries do you do, you do trade with? Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> uh, less than we did two and a half years ago, um, and certainly less in Europe. Um, probably about 12 or 13. We, right. we got to a higher number, but um, the pandemic sort of slowed us down. Yeah, bit, yeah. Um, I mean, we're, we're primarily trading in the UK. Mm -hmm. No, um, I mean, in terms of the producers. Uh, in terms of producers, we have. 38 cooperatives in 13 countries, so um, Peru, Costa Rica, down, down that, the, the Latin American side, uh, mainly East Africa after that, so Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, places like that. So. And so when, so all of your coffee is fair trade certified, is yeah. that right, yeah? Uh, some of it's organic as well? Yeah, so about 60% is organic. We were about 25% organic. We've been committed to get more and more organic, but the problem, of course, is it's it's increasing the cost, and if your business is mainly based in the joyous world of UK grocery, it's very hard to command the, the price that an organic product should be commanding. So, yeah. But yeah, I mean, from our point of view, we're, we're, we're trying to do what's the right thing for the farmers, and certainly in Peru in particular, it's very much an organic coffee market. So. Yeah, yeah. So um, in terms of when um, so Fairtrade International is kind of involved in the verification of mo monitoring, what does that look like from a farmer's perspective? Um, I think my honest answer is I don't know. But I think on principle, I think it's probably uh, onerous and cumbersome 
And then when you add other certifications, it must drive you crazy if you're trying to run a cooperative um, and try and make a, a living and try and get to one day a living wage or whatever. So I think, um, but I don't know really, but I think uh, on principle, making certifications simpler and easier to be engaged with as a producer must be a really important thing. Um, and uh, by the way, we are fair trade two words. I, we just happen to have a logo that has fair trade one word on it. But if you look at our articles of association, you look at our beliefs, it's very much two words. Yeah, and that's one of the other important things, because uh, you're a social enterprise as yeah. well, and I know that's important to you. Yeah, very, very much so. And um, I was saying to, to Julia earlier, you know, you've got things like Bass and WF. We've been a WFTO member. We're, we are a bit lapsed at the moment, <laughs> so I feel incredibly exposed. I'll um, talk later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I did talk to Erin a number of times okay. in recent years. Um, and then as you move across, you, you know, you move into the more mainstream certifications, and I think... Some of those are doing a very good job at the consumer end from a marketing perspective rather than as a systems change perspective. Um, and we need the systems change, don't we, really? So. Yeah, absolutely. We're all part of the same movement. Yeah. And tomorrow, that's one of the other interesting things, is the, the new sort of eBay for Change collaboration is a partnership between SCUK, WFTO and eBay. And that was the first time that I'd seen that kind of thing. Uh, but the definition of, of fair trade enterprises as social enterprises, is that something that WFTO are really keen on, on emphasising? Yes, and that's what's in, in, in our system as well. It's, it's so important to have that identity, um, and that also means that actually our members do work a lot with certified producers, but they also have their own uh, producers that they work with and, and monitor. Um, but again, it's really about what the organization stands for, and I think that's also what gives us a bit more room in our verification system, because we know at the core of these organizations, this is their reason for being. Uh, there's no other thing they need to do. That's, it's in their constitution, it's in everything they do, so that also gives us some room to have a verification system that leaves room for the movement uh, to focus on that system change that we uh, have one as one of our monitoring moments have um, that members can visit each other and, and learn from each other and see what can we do together create partnerships to again uh, strengthen that voice so it's very important for us to reach those new channels as well not to stick with uh, the traditional fair trade markets and, and I think the eBay for change product is, is such a good step in that direction to really reach new customers that may know that they want to do something differently but don't know where to go because they're so used to going to online to do this and do that and, and yeah this is a great opportunity yeah yeah that also sounds a bit like the bats conference where we all come together and try and <laughs> learn from each other so hopefully yeah. we're, we're able to facilitate that um john you're also a b core that's yes. something that's uh, quite a it, up and coming so it's this it seems to have made a big impact in, in quite a short time what uh, what yeah. sort of prompted you to get involved with that I feel even more exposed now. Um, <laughs> yeah, and no, I think um, as I was doing that little thing early on from you know, kind of hardcore to mainstream, I think I mean, B Core, we looked at it in 2015 when it first came to the UK, and I, I felt it, we, I was looking for the next community to join to try and change the system. And I think um, uh, I th found B Core quite interesting because it was looking at your whole business um, and rather than just your supply chain. So it was looking at you know, the way you engage with customers, the way you treat employees, and so on and so forth. So I think as a holistic um, kind of club to join, that's quite a good thing. I think the other thing that we were interested in um, is we were, it was very important for us to modernize and, and, and be as relevant in 2022 as we were um, in 1991. So um, adopting B Corps was quite an important kind of modernizer for us as well. Um, I think, how do I express my discomfort in the right way? Um, I think if you look at the heart and soul of our business, we're much more of a social enterprise and a WFTO member, really. Not that we are, so I'm in trouble again. Um, <laughs> but I think the B Corps movement, it is quite glossy and modern, and so it is getting quite good reach. Mm. Um, and uh, although there's a degree of discomfort with that, there's a degree of that kind of approach is going to have some impact on changing the, the mainstream because unfortunately we, ha we have to change the system for those that it's currently working so well for, otherwise we won't achieve the change we require. 
and that, I think that's a very challenging thing to do, but at least having a club like B Corps, even if you doubt the sincerity and you doubt the business models that are currently applying, at least they're getting in the game a bit. But I do think it's still a very, it's challenging. I mean, when we joined, we joined um, on June the 23rd, um, 2018, the same week as Innocent joined, which is a division of Coca-Cola. And that felt pretty weird. And then most recently, uh, that glossy, um, not only was it the most profitable brand for Nestle Worldwide Nespresso has joined as well. So it's a, it's a weird old game. Um, and we do get asked about that quite a bit. But, uh, but, I, but I do agree that it is complementary. You do have to reach out to, to reach these new people yeah. and make them think about what's going on. And then can, they can also start, start challenging. Yeah. What ha what's happening? So I, yeah, I don't see any. I, th I think that yeah, you have to try, and well, we have to. Yeah, we do. We have I, to reach I, out. As I was traveling today, I was thinking, we do, but I think we probably we have to learn from the experience of fair trade. One word where we we have to have a strategy that <laughs> drives the system change at an organizational level. Because if you look at fair trade as it mainstreamed in the mid two thousands, and people like Cadbury and Nestle adopted it, um, and then have moved away to create their own wonderful certifications. Um, you, I think that the strategy for system change needs to be deep enough for these organizations to effectively move away from shareholder primacy to yes. look after the different stakeholders. That's quite a difficult game when their ownership structure involves uh, you know, being on the FTSE or something. So, but anyway, I better go quiet and saying too much. No, it's, it, well, that, that's the whole point is that we're, you know, you've got so much experience here um, and a lot of the people here are, haven't got anywhere near as much experience in a this field as you. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So um, I think one of the things um, that, I was, that I hear a lot, do you think there are too many labels? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've thought that for, <laughs> bloody, for ages. Yeah, I, I remember doing a talk, I think Fairtrade got me to do a talk in Berlin uh, years ago for the G7 or the G8 or something, and it was about the proliferation of certifications. And it is such an annoying waste of time and such an inefficient um, application of great people wanting to change the world. So yeah, I think there are too many, clearly. I mean, am I, is that okay? Yeah, no, yeah. I agree. And like I said, I mean, it was a real struggle for us as well. Like, what do you do? Do you put another label into an already yeah. oversaturated market? But as, at the same time, our membership didn't fit the existing label. So I, I, we completely agree there are too many labels, but what to, how to address it, that's a whole other issue um, yeah. that's difficult. Because we, we have, we have Buy Social from Social Enterprise, we have B Corp, we have Fair Trade, Organic, I guess. Um, and then in our markets, you've got Rainforest Alliance, which is that beautiful frog, and things like that. So. As a, as a consumer, it must be really hard to decide what's the right thing to do, isn't it? Yes, exactly. And, and um, I think. For me, it feels like it depends on the sector. So there are too many labels in something like cocoa. There are arguably too many labels in something like coffee. Yeah. But for crafts, there's almost not enough. <laughs> um, because it's so hard to look at the entire supply chain mm. for something that doesn't like, come up out of the ground. It's, it's really difficult to make sure that everything's... Um, so th what do you see um, as the big challenge going forward with something like the guarantee system? I think a big challenge is to keep it relevant for our members. Um, so we try very hard to, to keep up with, with the demands of the market that they face. Um, but another challenge is that, of course, as a membership organization paid for mostly suppliers, about 70% of our membership is from producing uh, countries. And um, so the membership fees are quite low, relatively. That also means that there's not a huge marketing budget. So we heavily rely on our members to take that next step and to uh, bring them the products uh, to the market with that label on it. But at the same time, the vast majority of our members don't actually reach the end consumer. So at the moment, it's really very much focused on wholesalers to, to, to get their attention, and that's going really well. We have more and more people asking for that label, so we have uh, new organizations joining, wanting to be in the guarantee system because they have specific demands from that market. But that next step is really up to our members. And the risk with the newer members that are not as much part of the movement yet is that they're more starting to view WFTO as a service organization, which of course it's not. Uh, so I think over the last two, three years, we really made steps to uh, get more that more inclusive community feel again. 
the people really getting a feeling ownership of this brand and, and making the most of it, but those continue to be challenges. Yeah, absolutely. And I think particularly over the last two or three years, one of the challenges has been, as you know, we were supposed to be here two years ago and one year ago, and getting people together in the same room who can talk to each other um, and that organic conversation hasn't, hasn't been possible with any membership organisation. So we're getting slowly, slowly back into that. Um, one of the things that, interesting things that you mentioned was the idea of producer countries. So I think, um, I'm just wondering if um, any of your coffee, for example, is sold in the country where it's grown, because I think the sort of south to south and north to north <laughs> fair trade is something that's maybe, you know, is, is that where the future is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, there you go. Um, yeah, I mean, I think um, one of the most unfair and um, awful things I can remember is being in uh, Cusco in, in Peru, um, near where we get coffee from Machu Picchu, and you, you know, you've got farmers scraping together a, a, an income, and then in this old city, on the corner, you've got this huge Starbucks bringing coffee in from Colombia and charging a high price for it. And it's just a, a, a bottom to waste. It's bad, it's bad, yeah. And um, I think, so I think, yeah, I mean, adding value at origin rather than this traditional colonial model of the world, which is clearly, yeah, not, not right at all, is, 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 is really important. I mean, we, we haven't done enough. Um, we, we looked at doing a chain of coffee shops in Peru about three and a half years ago, which we didn't actually get off the ground. And we are looking at whether we can process um, at origin more, because a lot of coffee, you know, you're, you're shipping uh, yeah, wonderful coffees, but the value add is then made in Europe or somewhere where the, de mm. the developed country gets all the benefits. Mm. So we are looking at how we do that. And that's been done in a few places like Ethiopia and Mexico to an extent. So yeah, I think if you can um, add value um, at origin and also then get local, local sales going. Um, I mean, Cafe, Cafe Direct has um, a standalone charity that we set up that's owned by the producers. Uh, we set that up in 2009 that does a lot of our work on the ground. And they have been, they've been um, doing work in Kenya and starting to be in Peru, where they're uh, getting honey from the coffee farms and then branding that and selling that, so that rather than it being sold on the roadside at a very low commodity price, they're trying to add value and get it into local grocery stores and stuff like that, which is, is, is very important. Um, certainly, from our point of view, we need to help producers to run uh, thriving, exciting businesses that might have a, a, a monocrop at the centre of it, but they need to be a diverse and dynamic kind of business rather than, you know, a highly dependent um, crop that's very dependent upon an international market. So, yeah, I suppose that's yeah. part of the movement. Um, this, this morning we were hearing from, uh, from Paul, who, who works at CAT, um, about the idea of reducing the imports that we have, but obviously there was a question then about, well, how do we support the producers who are, you know, the, the people who were growing radishes in Peru, what do we do then? Um, and I, I, in Fairtrade Fortnight, I saw a fabulous film um, about some, some people in West Africa who were using the Fairtrade Premium um, and t diversifying their farm into, into snails because snails are a delicacy in West Africa. So essentially, the, because the markets are closed down with COVID, they weren't able to export their cocoa, but there was a market locally for snails, so they basically moved quickly and, and got into snails. So yeah, you can buy fair trade snails in West Africa now. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's the thing, it's about, one of the things that I've always loved about fair trade is how um, resilient we are as a movement and also, um, we can move like that. When the pandemic hit, how long did it take for us all to have masks in our shops? It was really quick because everybody just went, right, there's no point you making anything else other than masks. Make me some masks, we'll sell the masks. And it was, it, it, we, we were able to turn that around. And I think putting people first, that's what fair trade's all about. Um, the 
Final thing that I want to talk May about. I just one thing yes, of on, course. On, the, on this topic. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I also wanted to say, because I, I said production, pro producing countries, um, but as you may know, in the last few years, WFTO has also started working with northern producers, for lack of a better term. If anyone can come up with a better term, please let me know. Um, but that also means, if you look more at northern production, you also have to look more at southern markets. Um, and we're actually starting a project in, in Kenya and South Africa uh, with WFTO Africa and Middle East, and they are going to look into how do we create more fair trade market in those countries. And hopefully after that is very successful, we can start rolling that out in other countries as well. Because we see as well with all the transportation costs at the moment, it's just, it's such a risk to be so dependent on organizations halfway across the world for your sales. So it is a very, very important key point for us as well to, to keep looking at. But create these markets uh, is, is quite a challenge. Yeah, and I know that's one of the important things because um, obviously here in the UK, the Fair Trade Foundation deals with the Fair Trade Towns movement, but in the rest of the world, largely, it's, it's something to, that's to do with WFTO, isn't it? So uh, when you have a Fair Trade Town in Africa, it's uh, the WFTO staff member that uh, kind of oversees that process, and a lot of it is to do with local markets for, for Fair Trade products. Um, talking about sort of countries, um, the BAFTS is network member of WFTO, um, and I'm not sure that many of us here actually understand what that means, so do you want to explain a bit yeah, what, sure. what, a, what a network member yeah, is? Yeah, so uh, WFTO has network members, fair trade support organisations and fair trade organisations, so organisations are the traders, uh, there's about 375 uh, in I think 86 countries at the moment, then we have 26 uh, support organisations, you can think of uh, shared interest organizations like that, that, that offer other services to fair traders. And we have, I think, also 26 networks, uh, mostly in Europe and Asia. These networks all have their individual membership, but align their values, or WFTO and the networks have the same values, so there's a connection there, so we can work on campaigns together. Um, um, if we see opportunities for uh, support from governance coming in the direction of fair trade, we can contact these network members. When we have new members applying, we, we talk to the, the local networks to see if they know them, how they would fit in the movement. We strongly encourage membership of, of national networks because it's very important to start um, in, in a country and, and really find those synergies there. Um, in terms of branding and labeling, it means that the, the network that is a member of WFTO can show that connection uh, when they do any publications, any brochures, um, yeah, and, and really make sure to share all that information with their members. For example, we have um, a fair payment toolkit. We always invite our networks to, to share that with their membership in case anyone is interested in those tools or even our self-assessments reports, uh, if that's useful for any importer to start using those as well. We really try to reduce the work as much as possible um, for anyone involved and, and find efficiency there. And it, we don't expect all members of a network to become WFTO members as well, because we do realize very much that it might not be very relevant to be part of the broader movement around the world, but to already have that connection through national networks, we think uh, works really well and is very important. Yeah, that's, that's good. always good to know. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, just finally, um, I think we, we, we need to um, sort of round it back to um, what do you think is the most important thing um, for... I'll, start, I'll go back to John. Which is the most important certification? So you've got a few. We've talked about them. <laughs> what's, the, what's, the, what's the best one? <laughs> what's the best one? Uh. The one he doesn't have. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> a difficult day I'm having. <laughs> um, um, I've always said, um, and I've been doing this for 10 years, so not, not, not that long, but I've always said that the only mark that matters is the Cafe Direct mark and what that stands for and what everybody who's part of that chooses to behave like. And so I think a sign of when we are strong enough will be a sign we don't have other labels on the packs. I, I, I really I don't really, I don't believe in having labels on the packs. I believe in having a, a business model that acts in the best interests of stakeholders to, you know, make a fairer society and to help us to live in a world that's changing climatically. Um, so yeah, the, the mark that matters to me is Cafe Direct. 
<laughs> and that also fits with what we think. Yeah. WFTO should really be a support of and also with members potentially, like Cafe Direct being so strong in the market. If they would have the WFTO label on there, you can also help that reach for the smaller suppliers that don't have that name that's, that's uh, recognizable to buyers. So we, we really think the members are key in that and we really think that uh, yeah, their own brands are yeah. very important, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's difficult, isn't it? Because the benefit of having some of the labels on is you are helping the credibility of those labels. And I think that sometimes is, is a good thing, as long as it does lead to change. Really. Yes. Yeah. Well, that was my next question. Do you feel that, um, that help, they help with um, brand awareness and also with awareness of the issues? Do you feel that... The, it, we know that Ooh. the fair trade mark's got like a sort of a, a ninety percent recognition, but um, I know in fair trade fortnight, Brent fair trade went into the local co-op and asked people what they thought fair trade meant, yes. and the, the, there was a big variety of, of understanding. Do you think that people actually know what it means when they buy, for that reason? God, shouldn't have invited you to ask another question. <laughs> um, I, mean, I mean, I think it, it must be clear to all of us that. Um, the shorthand is quite helpful at the point of purchase, isn't it? But I think, um, and, and clearly awareness is one thing, but I think salience and understanding of the issues and how to uh, address them is quite low down, isn't it? So, I mean, the Fair Trade Foundation have done a brilliant job. I mean, the UK is a phenomenal market for awareness of, of that mark. Um, but ultimately, the, the downside is it can be shorthand, can't it? And you could still be buying a Fair Trade product from an organisation that's turning over a hundred billion pounds and giving all that money to a few people and ex being quite extractive in their approach. So yeah, I think it's, it's got two sides to it, hasn't it? I mean, I think um, on balance, we, we have, you know, being totally transparent, we've, we've, we've stuck with it and we believe trying to be part of the club and kind of change things and move it on is the right way. Um, but really, we're much more interested in the amount of money that goes to the farmer than we are in terms of the market. So there you yeah. go. Yeah, no, absolutely. So do you feel that, I know WFTO has got um, a number of different sort of departments and one of them is around campaigns like Welfare Trade Day. Do you feel that, um, that, that those campaigns are raising awareness of what WFTO does? Like I said, I think it's very difficult because we are present in so many countries and so dependent on our members. Um, I also really recognise that people don't really know the difference between WFTO and this more holistic approach and the Fair Trade International label. I don't necessarily, that's not always a problem because you have to start somewhere. You can't expect every consumer to really get into the, to the smaller details. Um, I think a lot of our campaigns are very focused on the community feel and that does bring a, a lot of interest from people outside of the movement uh, to really be part of something and, and going for this together. So I think that's very important. Wonderful. Okay, so I, th I think I've certainly come to the end of my questions. I want to thank Cafe Direct for uh, donating to our goodie bags, which are excellent. <laughs> I think they're the best goodie bags we've ever had at a Bass conference. <laughs> um, and, and then we'll, we'll start with, uh, with some questions. How long have we got? Hello. We've officially got uh, just over 10 minutes, um, and then... Which yeah. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. See we can, it goes. We can. We can. We can. We can take. If we've got loads of questions, we can take a little bit out of the tea break. Yeah. But I. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, that's oh, only, yeah. <laughs> only five minutes because we were we were fifteen minutes late back from the talk <laughs> because we were talking about poo. So. <laughs> so um, questions. Yes. If anyone's got any questions, time, thank time you all so much. Put some super steps on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I need some steps. <laughs> Oh dear, this is going to be a challenging one. <laughs> yeah, I'm already worried. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, going back to the question about B Corp. So B Corp is really a very, very uh, effective in reaching out to big companies and putting it on this step process, taking it towards uh, sustainability. But um, it's not uh, going out uh, talking about dealing with marginalised or vulnerable communities. It, do you think there's potential for synergy between B Corp and Fair Trade? Uh, to actually pr co-promote each other? Uh, 
Yes, I think, um, I mean, I've been on a couple of things over the last two years with Fair Trade Fortnite where I've been on kind of talks with both, both of them together, um, talking about climate justice. And I think, um, I think there is. I think, um, in a way, it felt like B Corp was very much trading off Fair Trade's heritage and uh, awareness, because B Corp's awareness is quite low. Because a little bit like yourselves, it, the charity actually has very limited resources. Mm. Um, and that's probably one of the, the benefits of it getting large corporates, is it provides a better income. But yeah, I think so. But you know, I mean, you know, and we're, we're, we're you know, proud to be a B Corp member, but I, I'm, I'm certainly hopefully giving you the feeling that it isn't the be all and end all, and it's got some, some inadequacies. I mean, I've sat next to Danone and Ella's Kitchen, and you know, felt like you know, ownership really matters. Whilst some of these organizations, of course, they don't want to talk about ownership because they're you know, large corporates that are not owned by farmers or, or the right stakeholders, in my view. But um, I do think collaboration between the different <coughs> parties is quite important. I mean, your thing with SE UK, I remember Peter Holbrook and Erinch um, coming and talking about that a few years ago, and they managed to make it come together. And, you know, when you're so aligned in your purpose, it's crazy to be um, distant, isn't it? So no, I think yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. yeah, I think that's really something we could and should. Yeah, Explore more. Um, and we can all learn from each other, can't we? Because they're all quite different. I mean, the, mm. one of them is quite glossy and seems to be able to engage Coke and Nestle or whatever, and others are, are you know, really authentic and genuine, but could benefit from working out how to be a bit more glossy is not the right word, but to reach certain parts of the of the community. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah, one, up, so one of the other in. things you mentioned was um, the bisocial corporate challenge, yeah. which is yeah. something that SE UK does with, with the members, um, asking big corporates to start sourcing goods on, from social enterprises. Uh, do you think that's, that's part of, of the way we move forward rather than trying to, to reform the entire organisation or, you know, close them down, um, to, to try and just get them to... Purchase better. I, I must say that I, st I struggle with it because, like you say, we do need systems change. So mm -hmm. how do you sort of work within a broken system while still challenging that it, it needs to change? But, for example, we, we have this first buyer label so our members can sell on products uh, to other organizations that are not WFTO members, but they have to meet the core requirements of fair trade, uh, sign a contract with us and buy a licensing fee. Um, there's a bit more about it, but that's it in a nutshell. Uh, and we're starting to have a lot of interest from big fashion brands for that. So we have to be very careful there as well that we really look at what is the purpose here. Is it greenwashing or fair washing in our case? Um, where do we go here? Um, so we, for example, now have a partnership with Chloe, a French um, high fashion brand, to really explore how this would work. So they're bringing in suppliers that they want to get fair trade uh, verified with us. Uh, but also start buying from our existing members. So it seems to be a very good way forward. Um, and again, reaching a whole new potential consumer base that could be more aware in their very big spending habits. So um, yeah, I, I do think, yeah, it's yeah a balance act. It's, it's difficult. Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, to keep cheerful, I mean, if you look at the perspective, the progress that's been made is, is good. It's just we know there's so much more to be done, don't we? So, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Oh, well done. <laughs> Every Just time I know I can count on you. It's question boy. <laughs> Hi. Um, so I see consensus from all of you, and I'm sure all of us will have the same uh, consensus as well, that there is a huge number of uh, certifications going on. This feels like I'm from the IT background, so it feels like IT industry. You know, Every six months, you have to certify again and again, and something new comes on. Um, but if there is, uh, and going to the question about B Corp, B Corp is more like glossy or elitist or whatever you want to call it. Um, if it's helping the big boys and girls like Nestle and, and Danone and all of that, um, why can't SE UK and WFTO join forces like they have done for EB for Change? But EB for Change is just one example. It is nowhere near what can be done by joining forces. I mean, this is obviously has to be done at the top, has to be done at the top. Uh, I don't know, members, I don't think will have that much uh, opposition to if you, if you just decide, you know, that, you know, we, we have similar uh, journeys, we have similar goals, we have similar aspirations, and why can't you have just one certification 
uh, which everybody can do it. And because most of us are running very small businesses and we don't have the time or energy or the resources or the money to keep on doing these, these certifications again and again and again. It's just not possible. I, I completely understand and, and agree. It's just a difficulty. What system do you go with? <laughs> yeah. Um, because, of course, we try to find those synergies, but like I said, we work with, with 26 networks, and we also have to be very careful that our system is the same for every country. I mean, we have some networks that would like to play a bigger role and actually do take over part of the verification, but if you start doing that, you run the risk of it becoming different in different countries. So. Um, so, so far, really, the focus has been those synergies. Um, hopefully, in the future, we can go even further and, and reduce the, the need for more systems, or at least accept each other's systems without asking for the same um, yeah. or different forms again. Yeah, it's almost like separate but equal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sort of thing. Yeah, so, I know, yeah, so um, we, sorry. I know the Social Enterprise World Forum is working on a, on, on a system of verification at the moment, um, and, all, and WFTO standards and SEUK standards are both completely compliant with that. Um, and they're trying to work on, on something that wherever you are, if you are not eligible to become a member of SEUK or WFTO or a few other ones, that you can actually apply these particular standards and, and that will be the one thing so I think it's it's less about just having one mark because people identify differently um, and things that are important to one person is less important to others and actually it's quite nice for us to have groups like BAFTS where it's very specifically about small independent fair trade shops and suppliers um, and and then but we're part of something bigger um, so yeah, the, you know, the, there's ways and means of doing it. Yeah, and there, like for example, we work with Fairtrade Federation in the US, and they also are reviewing if they can just say if someone is a WFTO member, they don't have to do anything extra to become um, a Fairtrade Federation member. Um, we also have a retailer standard, where shops in in countries can, with their national network, can look into setting up an agreement with WFTO, so they can also have that same logo in their shop windows. Um, so we are really trying to find ways to sort of have the same um, setup. Um, I mean, it would be great if we could all do that on, under one label, but I also very much see that it's for every country, it, it's quite difficult to make that switch because, yeah, because everyone is also so passionate about fair trade. Uh, we all think we, we're doing it the best way possible. So <laughs> that, uh, that might, might be difficult, yeah. Sorry, I've just got one more question. Yeah, sure. Um, and, you know, you guys uh, touched on that before in your discussion that um, Cadbury's and Nestle, they, they got this um, certification, the fair trade, the single word, single uh, fair trade, uh, one word um, certification, and then they, then they left and they decided to have their own certification systems, um, which in a way sounds like um, they capitalized on it and then they left and then people still think that, you know, they, that that chocolate is still fair trade and you know they're still doing the right thing and they've come up with their own mark shouldn't there be some sort of penalty on these kind of practices well, so that you know it do. doesn't favor them all the time <laughs> again i'm going that it doesn't favor i mean how yeah. are we supposed to compete with these kind of people yeah. if we <laughs> you know if but they I mean, do the this EU all the time is, is setting up regulation around that um so they are uh, working on a system where companies cannot have their own certification system. They cannot have a label for something they in-house develop. They can't be the standard setter, the verifier, and the one actually selling the products. So um, I think it's going to start in France, and then the, the European Parliament's going to look into that. Uh, but hopefully that will be that will spread to other countries. I mean, I mean we, we, we made countries. some really yeah. sensible, <laughs> some really good choices here. So that means that, that won't apply to us, but <laughs> that's another conversation. Um, probably time just quickly for one more question. Sorry, everyone out here and then some of Has anybody got anything else? I think you, you, you're both around over coffee and dinner this evening, aren't you? Think, so, yes. so if anyone's got any specific kind of things, but Diane, oh, blind. Okay. <laughs> okay. Diane's brilliant, Tamara's good. brilliant, you'll have a lovely chat, have That's some good. wine. That's all I'm saying. Um, and anybody else got a 
Anything? Oh, the one thing I was going to say is that um, just so BAFs members are aware, we have been in conversation with WFTO about BAFs shops being able to put the WFTO mark on their shops. That is something we are working towards. It's just... We're doing a pilot scheme, aren't we? We're going to do Absolutely. a pilot scheme. Absolutely. Um, it, it kind of went slightly awry due to pandemics and things. <laughs> so, so, but we, 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 were, we are going to do our best to get that back on track. 